Hi Brawlies, Marvin here from TechBureau.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy bureaus. And today we're going to do an unboxing review of the Epo Maker AK84S wireless mechanical keyboard that is currently on Kickstarter right now. I feel like this keyboard is really a good option if you're looking for a wireless relatively compact keyboard that doesn't compromise anything when it comes to functionality and features. It also has a lot of potential for customization that makes it appealing for both beginners and enthusiasts. In this video, we'll discuss all the necessary details that you need to know about this keyboard should you choose to back it up or purchase it once in stock. With that being said, let's get into it. Let's start with a quick unboxing. The packaging is the typical gray box with the Skylung branding at the center, which gives us an idea that this was manufactured by Skylung, which most of the keyboards from Epo Maker was made from. Upon opening the box, the first thing you'll notice is the user manual, and what we have here is the AK84S, which is the dual wired and wireless version. There are actually a lot of versions of this keyboard available on their Kickstarter page, like with aluminum casing, acrylic casing, and in different types of keycaps and switches. I'll put a link below so that you can check it out. Next, inside the box, we have the Epo Maker AK84S, nicely protected by clear plastic. Aside from that, underneath the packaging, we also have a braided USB Type-C cable with a Velcro strap and gold-plated plugs. We also have a standard keycap and switch puller right here and some replacement keycaps for Windows since this keyboard is compatible with both Windows and Mac OS. Now, at first look and touch, although what I have here is the plastic version, it feels solid enough with a decent weight to it and it doesn't flex at all. The combination of the hard plastic case and the CNC aluminum plate makes the overall build quality pretty decent, though I would have preferred the aluminum casing any time of the day. It weighs roughly around 736 grams. Flipping it on the front side, you can have an idea about the profile of the keyboard, especially the keycaps, as what we have here is the GK1 profile. Flipping it on the left side, as you can see, the top cover droops down to the sides, overlapping the bottom casing. The bottom casing also has this slanted design for that ergonomic form factor. As for the GK1 profile, it is a sculpted profile that, as per my research, is almost identical to the CAT profile in terms of the sculpt, but the CAT profile's height is taller. To be honest, I'm happy to see more sculpted profiles as I really like the sexiness of SA, but I don't necessarily like its height, so having something similar with a shorter height is a nice option to have. Looking at the back side, we have the USB Type-C port here, which is nicely recessed with the case. Like I said, the top housing overlaps the bottom housing with a subtle glossy lining on its edges. Turning it all over at the bottom, we have four rubber feet, four flip-out stands with a rubber tip as well, which I really like. And I've seen this design before from Ako, Ducky, and Durgod, and it's a good implementation for height adjustment and ergonomics. And lastly, we have some branding, technical details, and certifications right here. Going back in front, in terms of the layout, what we have here is a 75% layout with 84 keys. And with this kind of layout, it doesn't compromise anything when it comes to the necessary keys while maintaining a relatively compact form factor. This is a good middle ground between the 60% and 10 keyless form factors. We still have dedicated arrow keys, some of the frequently used nav cluster keys, and the complete function row up top without necessarily have to resort to layer implementation. However, in return, we have smaller alt, function, control, and right shift keys to accommodate all these keys. The good thing is that more and more key sets are getting available for the 75% layout. Again, this keyboard is also available in aluminum and acrylic case on the Kickstarter page. Now, the design of this key set with a combination of white, black, and light green actually grew on me over time, and I kinda like it now. I also like the GK1 profile with sexy scalps while having a shorter height, and the fonts are actually pretty decent and for the most part clean, except for those who have sub-legends, which I think is somehow necessary, especially for beginners. Overall, I like how this keyboard looks out of the box and having a cute dice sublimated panda on the spacebar added some icing on the cake. Now, this keyboard packs a ton of features like Bluetooth 5.1 connectivity with up to 3 devices and you can also save your settings on the onboard memory up to 3 different profiles. We also have the usual shortcuts such as the screen brightness, backlight brightness, multimedia keys, and other shortcuts for Mac OS. Most of the keys and functionalities can also be customized using the driver software, which again you can save on the onboard memory. Here's the user manual so that you can have an idea about all the different functions and features of this keyboard without wasting too much of your time. Take a screenshot if you want. In terms of the keycaps, what we have here is made out of PBT plastic, 
which is known to be durable and doesn't shine that easily over time compared to ABS plastic. The legend is also dye sublimated, which means it is now part of the plastic and will never fade away. The thickness is around 1.5 to 1.6 millimeters. So out of the box, you already have a pretty decent set of keycaps. Now, for all the crowdfunding campaign backers, you will get the GK2 silicon keycaps, which I will show to you later. What's cool about this set is that it includes a dye sublimated space bar with this cute little panda. The dye sublimation quality is pretty decent, sharp, and goes all around the space bar. Now, here's the weird part about my review sample. The switch on this keyboard is Scalebox Reds, but on their Kickstarter page, Scalebox Switch is actually not included in the options. What is available are Gattern switches, both optical and standard mechanical switches, and Epo Maker's own chocolate switches, not to be confused with Kale's chalk switches by the way. So yeah, just take that in mind, and the sound test later will probably not going to be that significant, but I'll still include it anyway. Kalebox Reds, like most Red switches, are lightweight, with an actuation force required of only around 45 grams, so it is easy to type with, but at the same time might be too sensitive for some, resulting in unwanted typos. But if you're a fast and accurate typist, then this could be a viable option. In terms of the stabilizers, like most pre-built keyboards out in the market, there is a noticeable rattle, and you can probably notice that here when I tap it lightly on the sides. It's not entirely bad though, compared to other pre-built keyboards that I've tried before, but it definitely needs some sort of modding and tuning if you're into that. It comes with pre-applied lubricant, but it's not enough to keep the rattle in check. Another thing that I like about this keyboard is that it is hot swappable and supports both 3-pin and 5-pin switches. So if in case you don't like the available switches, you can easily swap them out with your own, or if some switches become faulty at some point, you can also replace them individually. Again, the Epo Maker AK84S is available in both the traditional mechanical switches and the more recent optical mechanical switches. Now, on the other side of things, what I don't like about this keyboard is that there is no physical power button and you have to use key combinations in order to power the keyboard, which sometimes could be a pain in the butt. There is also no physical button for switching between wired and wireless mode, so yeah, again, you have to use key combinations. I guess the real problem here is that the keycaps are not shine through, so you really can't see what's getting activated underneath because some of these functions actually have some sort of LED indicators. Like for example, if you double tap the FN key, it will light it up, indicating that the FN key is in hold status. The Bluetooth profile number 1 also seems to light up, and if you press FN plus F4, it will show you the battery level, all of which are not visible because of the non-shine through keycaps. Not to mention, you don't get to see the different lighting effects as well, including the audio visualizer as you can see here. But if all those LED indicators don't mean much to you, then you should be fine. Speaking of LEDs, as you can tell, this keyboard uses SMD LEDs or surface mounted LEDs with true RGB support, which means they are capable of producing up to 16.8 million colors and that the transition between animation is pretty smooth. Now, before we move on, let's take a look at the GK2 silicon keycaps. It comes with this nice packaging and is well protected inside with styrofoam. All the keycaps are nicely tucked inside a plastic packaging. Right out of the packaging, the keycaps feel, well, like what a silicon material feels, soft and rubbery. The silicon cover can easily be removed, and if you have another set of these, you can easily replace the entire set without removing the MX style plastic support. The keycaps thickness is around 1.9 to 2.1 millimeters. Later, we also do a sound test for this in comparison with the stock PBT keycaps. It has some imperfections though, maybe from the mold, but you can easily cut it off using a side cutter if you want. Now, in terms of the typing feel for the GK2 silicon keycaps, it is harder than I initially thought, but definitely provides the softer and grippier feel. A breath of fresh air, I would say, but I won't go as far as saying it is much better than the traditional all-plastic keycaps. And at the end of the day, it will boil down to your personal preference. One thing I noticed though that extremely frustrated me is that whenever I try to remove a keycap, the switch also comes along with it. It's probably the combination of the keycap stem being tight and the switch and plate being loose. Nevertheless, it's still not a deal breaker. Now, here's a typing test so that you can have an idea of how the Killbox Red switches sound in this keyboard and how the standard GK1 PBT keycaps sound in comparison with the GK2 silicon keycaps.
Moving on in terms of the performance, when it comes to NKRO or the feature that allows you to press multiple keys at the same time without conflicts, in wireless or Bluetooth mode, I can press up to 6 keys, while in wired mode, I can press up to 10 keys and possibly more. As for the wireless performance, it is actually pretty decent. I didn't notice any perceivable latency and it is perfectly usable or throughout, which is quite expected already for something that uses Bluetooth 5.1. Gone were the days that Bluetooth keyboards have significant latency. Now, battery life with a decently sized 4000 mAh of capacity as per specifications can last up to 20 to 80 hours with RGB lights on and can last up to 2 to 5 weeks depending on your usage. On the other hand, charging the keyboard can last up to 8 to 10 hours. It has yet to die on me during the duration of this review, so it is pretty good. Again, you can connect this wirelessly up to 3 different devices. Aside from that, you also have up to 5 different profiles, 3 of which you can save into the onboard memory and can be used without having the driver software open. Those are layers 1, 2, and 3. The other two profiles are the standard, which cannot change as it is the default profile, and the other one is the driver mode, which you need the driver software open. Speaking of the driver software, since the AK84S is still currently on Kickstarter, it is not yet available on Epo Maker's download page, but I tried the SK and GK keyboard driver version 6.0.0.46 and it seems to work just fine. Having used Kailung and Geek keyboards before, it is already somehow familiar to me. And the software looks like it has been polished as well and is more streamlined and easy to use now. On the first page, we have the configurations wherein you can pretty much change most of the keys to a different function like primary keys, number of pad, media shortcuts, system shortcuts, mouse functions, and others. Like I said, it is pretty intuitive and powerful if you have the time to tinker with it. We even have this guidelines tab for quick info about the layer implementation. Very nice. The second page is the LE files or I guess lighting effects, wherein you can customize the lighting effects depending on your preference and the amount of time you are willing to invest here. I'm not gonna bore you with all the different lighting effects because quite honestly, there are a ton more than I am used to with other keyboards. And lastly, the third page is the macros, wherein you can configure your own macro recordings or use the available presets here if you're into that. And that's pretty much about the software and the Epo Maker AK84S. So to conclude, the Epo Maker AK84S is such a good 75% keyboard that caters to pretty much anyone looking for a relatively compact keyboard with all the necessary keys and functionalities of a 10 keyless keyboard while offering more to the table. It has dual wired and wireless functionality and is compatible with both Windows and Mac OS, prioritizing the latter which is quite unusual for pre-built keyboards. It has decent battery life, good NKRO performance especially in wired mode, and basically doesn't have any perceivable latency on wireless mode. It is also backed up by intuitive and powerful software and performs great out of the box. The only thing that I don't like about this is the fact that it doesn't have any physical buttons for power and Bluetooth mode. Overall, I really feel like this keyboard is really a good option if you want, again, a very compact form factor with all the necessary functions and features. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to Epo Maker for sending this in. Now depending on when I finally upload this, you can either back this up in Kickstarter and receive the GK2 silicone keycaps or get this if ever it becomes in stock on Epo Maker's website. I'll put the link below so that you can check it out. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.